Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a motorcycle racing TV show called Team Chicago Challenge. My email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. My uh, website is teamchicago.tv. That needs to be improved. I have to find time to redo it. We are at the location, but the rock is gone. Nobody can tell me where it is. You got the Obama Temple being built across the street here. And uh, they moved the rock and it, it's gone. So for many, many years, when the first automobile race in America was on Thanksgiving Day, 1895. In 1995, they set a stone at this location, which was the official start of the race. Back in 1880, 1895, they raced from this location to Evanston and back. Six cars started, two finished, and uh, that was the first automobile race in the United States of America. So, the rock is gone. A couple people came by in their Corvettes. Pete and I are here. If anybody shows up, I'll get their comments. But this is uh, a pretty, uh, pretty sad that nobody has any idea where the rock is. I've talked to the construction company. I talked to uh, uh, one of the guys on the job said the rock was put, the boulder with the plaque on it, was put on a skid and they took it away. I talked to the park district downtown. Nobody has any interest. I stopped at the field house here in Jackson Park. I was supposed to get a call back, no call back. So like everything else in Chicago, nobody cares. But Pete's here, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna look at some footage from the past. I'm also gonna show you um, a little clip of what they did at the portage. The Portage is a location where Father Marquette and Lois Lewis Joliet went from the Des Plaines River over to the old Chicago River, Mud Lake, made the Portage so they could continue on to Lake Michigan. That was in the late 1600s. They have a nice statue there. They have a nice background. They have the canoe. They have Father Marquette, Lewis Joliet. That's what should be right here. If the city of Chicago had any brains, they would build something nice, have replicas of the two cars that finished this race, and let people pull over here, especially with they're gonna have a NASCAR race in Chicago, it'd be a perfect location for people to come and celebrate the first automobile race. But, like I said, we have people that run this city, run the state, that have no brains. But anyway, let's see what happens here, and I'm gonna show you some old footage from uh, 1995. I'm gonna show you some footage with me and Bill Wilk talking about what should be built here. And I think uh, it's gonna be a pretty interesting show. Remember, my email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. This is the plaque that is on the rock that we are talking about and looking for. This rock was set at this location in 1995. We are now looking at the J. Frank Durier car with J. Frank Durier as the driver. This is the car that won the race that went from this location in Jackson Park all the way to Evanston and back. This is the site of the 1893 World's Fair, the Columbian Exposition. This is the car that finished second this is the Mueller Benz. Charles Mueller collapsed towards the end, and it was Charles King that drove this car across the finish line. Duryea finished the race at 7.18 p.m., starting here in Jackson Park, going to Evanston, and back. The Mueller Benz car finished the race at 8.53 p.m. The race was nearly 50 miles long, and it took nearly 10 hours to complete. And Pete Ballandier is here, and he's gonna give us some more information. Hello, my name is uh, Pete Ballander. 
I'm here with uh, Dan. We're uh, across the street from where the rock uh, used to be. Uh, the rock is uh, the first place we had a automobile race in 1895. And a bunch of us uh, motorheads uh, come down here on Thanksgiving morning and uh, just uh, just hang out for a couple hours before we uh, go eat our turkey. Uh, right now we have the Obama Center going up where the rock used to be. We have no idea where the rock is and uh, we have uh, no idea what's, uh, what's going to happen to the rock in the future. I used to come down here with Bill Wilt. Uh, Bill Wilt uh, had his program on for an hour and he would come down here every Thanksgiving morning and uh, interview all the uh, drivers that came down with their sports cars, their hot rods, and their uh, all their cars, trucks, uh, motorcycles, and uh, we'd have a good time uh, every mo every Thanksgiving morning. And uh, uh, Bill was uh, back here back in '95. Uh, they were doing a. Uh, a dedication to the rock and that's when they first put the rock in place and uh, I've been coming out here every year uh, since then and uh, every Thanksgiving uh, morning uh, till, till uh, about, about 12 o'clock and uh, we just had a good time on Thanksgiving morning and uh, I'm gonna miss the rock I hope they do something with it uh, in the future so we could all gather again and uh, have a good time. I uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Pete. We are just a little south of the Museum of Science and Industry, and now we're gonna jump back to 1995 when they set the rock at this location. At the original race, there were 83 contestants who lined up, only six all equipped with a foghorn or a trumpet in order to let other vehicles or pedestrians know to get out of the way. Only six ended up by being in the race. They started up at the starting line. One of them ran into a horse cart in front of the Art Institute, they tell us, and, and another one crashed into a sleigh. And we're lucky to have with us today the great-grandson and grandson of the winner of that race. It was on a very blustery Thanksgiving morning, 100 years ago today, after a 12-inch snowfall. Only two of, of the cars, traveling at about 15 miles per hour, made the full 54-mile trip from here, at almost this spot, to Evanston and back again, both internal combustion vehicles. In 1945, on the 50th anniversary of the race, more than 30 vehicles turned up. Today, we have more than 100. 100 participants, many of the cars dating back to the turn of the century, uh, back at a time when there were only 150 miles of paved road outside the cities in our country. 1900, only 150 miles of paved roads outside of the, the cities. Maxwell, Packard, Pierce Arrow, Model T, Nash, DeSoto, a lot of the great old names. And, and the cars come to us today from Minnesota, Wisconsin, Kansas, Michigan, Indiana, and of course, Illinois. After just a few remarks from Jerry Foreman, who's really our leader in this, and others, and the unveiling of the plaque, which is right here, which the Duriers will do for us, the race will begin, they go up King Drive, Michigan Avenue, through Lincoln Park, up to Evanston, where at the Historical Society, the old uh, uh, Dawes Hub Mansion, they'll have a lunch and then turn around and come back here. 100 days of, of this observation that's been in the planning stages for some 30 months. Jerry Foreman, who's the chairman, is the founder and the president of Hammer at Home. It's a construction company based here in Chicago, and I know they do good work because they've done some for, for, for me. He was an electrical engineer at the General Motors Institute, and he restored his first classic car when he was still in college. Jerry, would you also, when you uh, come up to the microphone, introduce your fellow members of the executive committee.
Two years ago, when we started thinking about this, we all wondered whether anybody would remember what happened 100 years ago today. I think just looking around, we all know that it's going to be remembered not only today, but for a long time to come. I'm really thrilled with everybody who's here. We're glad to have you. And it's been a long road getting here, but we're just just thrilled to have everything happening today. I do want to introduce the executive committee that's worked real hard with me. They're just the beginning. There's a lot of other people, too. But I'll start over here. This is Barney Shoecraft, George Bovis, This is George Brugenthies here. John Clean. John. Alan Loeb with the great hat behind me. That's the six people, including myself, of the executive committee who have been working for a couple of years on this. But as I said, there's hundreds of others. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce George Bovis to have a few words. Everybody's going to be brief today. We're all cold, and we're all anxious to get into those nice, warm cars. <laughs> well, 30 months, a lot of sweat, tears, frustration, and you all are the psychic income we've harvested. Thank you all for being here. You've brought wonderful automobiles, you've brought yourselves, and you have made this a 100th anniversary celebration on Thanksgiving that none of us will forget. So we thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to have the unveiling of the plaque which was just put on this rock yesterday, a permanent plaque, and we have the great-grandson and the grandson of the winner, Mr. Durier, of that very first race a hundred years ago, if they'll do that. And then we have a couple other things for you, and then we'll start the race. Thank you. Right. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, on behalf of the uh, J. Frank Durier family, uh, my father and uh, my mother Marita, who are here today, uh, we want to thank you all for turning out on such a uh, uh, important day in auto history. It, it represents a, a great period for the uh, a year ahead, and uh, you're taking the time out of your Thanksgivings is a wonderful thing for us to see, uh, and uh, uh, we salute you. Um, this is an imp important day in, in auto history, and uh, it, it really has been a great month for the Durier family. We were in New York earlier this month uh, for the unveiling of the uh, commemorative stamp, and uh, today's event uh, ends the month on a, a real high point, and that is uh, uh, commemorating not only 100 years of automobile racing, uh, but really what uh, historians like uh, Dr. Scharschberg and uh, Tom Reese and some of you here uh, uh, who are here today uh, recognize as uh, the birth of the automobile industry and really when Chicago uh, introduced uh, America to the automobile. Uh, it's appropriate that it is cold today, and uh, uh, you all know the conditions that we uh, or were faced in the uh, on the first race. Uh, we're slogging around in a bit of snow, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, terrible weather may really have been a determining factor in proving the reliability and uh, really the viability of the automobile and uh, the changes that it, it proved. Uh, we're not alone. On the 50th celebration, it was 16 degrees. So uh, don't feel too uh, uh, too bad, and uh, so in the uh, uh, spirit of uh, J. Frank uh, Durier, today should uh, really be no different. Um, many of you are from different regions of the AACA and uh, Horses Carriage Club of America, and uh, we're going to be dragging our uh, 03 Stevens Durier around the country here and try to visit uh, with many of you in your uh, specific uh, regions. Um, the brass era. Uh, uh, folks who are restoring brass era cars uh, it, are in particular, I think, uh, very important stewards of some great pieces of artwork, as we can see here uh, today, lining the uh, road. And uh, this year, more than any year, uh, gives us a, a wonderful opportunity to uh, uh, give exposure uh, and, and really allow people uh, accessibility to these great pieces of, uh, of work. Uh, and perhaps along the way, we can inspire some more enthusiasm enthusiasts uh, to our great hobby here uh, and of course have some fun. But at, at this point I feel like I should say gentlemen start your engines but maybe if I can uh, get you up here dad we can unveil the, uh, uh, the, the plaque.
A word now from our historian, Dr. Sharsberg. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to say just one or two words. They said, keep it short. And uh, I was almost tempted to pull something that's a little bit theatrical. Uh, I may do it yet and then just take uh, one or two moments. My purpose here is to, is to try to put this race in perspective in terms of why the race and why Chicago for that race. My, my inclination was to uh, really keep it short and uh, say uh, what was the significance of the race. Well, here it is, right here. This is a booklet prepared by Frank Durier, and it says, when Chicago introduced the automobile to America. That's why the race. This event, more than any other event that occurred at any other time, was responsible for opening the door on the auto age. It began here, it began in Chicago. The great significance of it is precisely that. Nearly every historian, never, nearly every auto enthusiast dates the auto age beginning in 1895. Herman Colsat, editor of the Chicago Times Herald, had the idea for it from uh, uh, watching uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, race uh, in, uh, in Paris and uh, decided that America needed it too. He uh, promoted it and it started from relatively near here. And uh, with that, uh, I think that's enough. Just remember what Frank said a few years later, the significance of the race when Chicago introduced the automobile to America. Thank you. Yes, it was a great day in Chicago in 1995. As we look at the Museum of Science and Industry, we're going to talk to my good friend, the well-known Crazy Art. Hi, I'm Art Mushevich. I'm out here at The Rock, celebrating the first car race in uh, North America in 1895. This was a tradition with Bill Wilt and Dan Schmidt. They were going for years, having a beautiful gathering here and unfortunately the rock has been moved and has disappeared and no one can find it so if anyone knows what happened to the rock please let Dan and everyone know they put it on the skid and it disappeared um, I'm presenting to Dan a uh, Avanti calendar uh, Dan knows a lot about Avantis like so many people well let me point out that's the number nine car that is the Avanti that set the land speed record in 1963, I believe, where it went 170 miles an hour. The record stood for many, many years. Mar um, Andy Granatelli was involved with STP, and uh, that's why the STP sticker is on there. And that was the car. And uh, I, I, I've been following this whole Avanti thing many, many years, and I'm so happy to hear Art that you own an Avanti. Mm -hmm. And you should also mention, we'll mention Open Road Radio, because you were the number one caller <laughs> to Gina and the gang at Open Road oh, Radio. I love listening to it. It was so refreshing, Sunday nights or Saturday mornings. I wish they'd be back on AM radio for us, old timers. I was at the uh, full moon a few months ago, and it seems the new generation doesn't know that we used to have to kickstart motorcycles to start them and we used to shift many of them with our right foot rather than our left toe. So things have changed in a generation. There's so much to learn and stuff like that. It's uh, sad that so many of our loved ones and friends have passed away and our generation is literally dying off and fading away, but we've got to keep history and journalism so we understand all of this. And you always learn something new, and stuff that has happened in the past um, is still historical, and if you don't study history in the past, you're going to repeat its problems, stuff like that. The thing I want to say, another story about Avantis, 
an STP. Uh, apparently Avanti, if you know, they have the very small grill in the front, just like the Corvettes. And um, on long trips, they send, tended to overheat a little bit. And the Studebaker knew about an additive, a motor oil additive they were using in Germany that helped cool the engines down when they ran. So they started importing the additive and they called it STP. So um, it helps cool the engine and gives the extra lubrication. And uh, well, in the old days when your piston rings run out, you threw a few cans of STP to keep the smoke in. But uh, that's a thing of the past and that's all. I, w I want to thank Dan for being out here. This is a great tradition for everyone to come out here and see things. And um, let's keep all the motor clubs going. I'm in the Chicago Land Avanti Owners Association, a fantastic organization along with the international one. I'm in the uh, Chicago Land Norton Owners Associate Club, which is a fantastic meeting. See all those beautiful symmetrical English parallel twin motorcycle bikes out there. I'm in the Nash Metropolitan Club also. The uh, first little um, economy car uh, made by American Motors imported from England. And uh, there's so many other wonderful cars out here. Join a car club. Help support them by paying your membership and keeping them going because there's so much history that we don't know about it and it, it needs to it needs to stay here for all of us for our future generations. Once again, Dan, I present you with this calendar and thank you. And let's remember Bill Wilt and Jim Viverito and all our other friends who have blessed us. And that, including my beloved wife, Deborah. Thank you so much for having us, Dan. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Art, as we look at a few photos from the race in 1895 these are newspaper photos that are not so great which you point out six cars took the start two were electric four were gasoline powered only the durier car was built in america the other three were benz's motors and back in 2016 bill wilt and i had a chance to discuss what should be done at this site to make it more attractive to the public. We're lucky we're here. Yeah. We're lucky we came through that great era. The rock thing, this, the beauty of the rock, not only the first automobile race it's ever in the United States, but the people that like the MG guys, they've been here Every from year. the beginning. And it's- And the Corvette guys are getting that way Corvette too. the Corvette guys yeah. too. North so Shore Corvette Club. It's one of these little deals. I mean, if I was mayor of Chicago, I'd have a monument here. I'd have washrooms here. I would be here if I was the mayor. Oh, without I would, a doubt. Yeah. Now, where's Rauner? He's who the is, motorcycle guy. Who was the one politician that came down here? Danny Davis. Danny Davis. That's Danny right. Davis come here. He's right. a That's nice right. man, and right. he, he was interested Congressman in Danny Davis. Congressman Danny and Davis. He was interested in and what he was we really were doing. interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah, really was. Yeah, yeah. What I would do if I were the city, <clears throat> this is such a, because it's an important historical site for people involved with motorsports, and you have to understand that NASCAR built a speedway in Joliet, the Chicagoland Speedway. It draws 100,000 spectators every year. If they knew they could just drive a little bit north of Chicago and take their picture with their car by the monument, the rock, that identifies the start and finish of America's first auto race, I would bet three quarters of them would come up here to get that picture. So what you need here is all of this should be cobblestone around here. All cobblestone where people are encouraged and, to bring their cars up. And if someone did it and you put your name on the cow, how many people would pay? Hey, exactly. So it wouldn't cost taxpayer anything, but because- No, 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 but think, it doesn't go. If you bring, I said three quarters of the people come up here. Let, let's say right. 60,000 people. Right, right. You bring 60, you know how much money they drop off yes, coming up here? Yes, They stop yes, and eat, yeah, they yes. get gas and, and everything. the museums oh, right the museums here. right down the street. Right, right. Oh, I mean, it's a natural. And why they haven't picked up 21 years I've been doing this. It's just you and me, Bill. It's just you and me, buddy. So, <laughs> so, but that's okay. I don't give up easy and neither do you. <laughs> that was my conversation with the late, great Bill Will. We are now looking at the National Monument with the Forest Preserve Department of Cook County put this monument up to Louis Joliet and Father Marquette. 
This marks the location of the Chicago Portage. Father Marquette and Joliet cross from the Des Plaines River to Lake Michigan. This is a very historical spot and they have honored it. The city of Chicago should also do something to honor the location of the first automobile race. It's a very important industrial spot in Chicago. This is another monument in Chicago for Father Marquette, and I bet you the mayor has no idea where that marker is. And now we're looking at the start of the race or the parade, 1995. This was shot by Bill Wilt, Motorsports Unlimited TV, as we see some of these great looking vintage cars making the trip from this location on the south side of Chicago to Evanston and back. I am sorry I don't have any more information on the American Auto Sports Centennial Committee, but to contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action. And I highly encourage you to plan a trip to the World of Motorcycle Museum, Winnemac, Indiana, four miles south of North Judson, on Indiana 39. Call them first at 574-896-3172. It's a great trip and a great collection of motorcycles.